Welcome everyone to Roots Revival Interfaith, our Sunday service. I am your pastor, Ivy Rivera. I'm a psychic medium, Taino Airwak. We will be here today with Reverend Danny Johnson, our numerologist, and Reverend Christina Del Rey, our astrologer. Today we are talking about staying in your own energy. Staying in your own energy is a lot easier than it sounds. And the older we get, the more difficult it becomes if we haven't properly trained ourselves in our youth. Okay, notice I'm talking about training ourselves. What do I mean by this? You know, no one can do it for you. They can only tell you and direct you that it would be best. And society is dead set against you staying in your energy. So we've been programmed, whether it be through TV shows and advertisements, billboards, our educational system, our religious system, government systems, the patriarchy, colonization, and capitalism are all designed to keep you out of your own energy at all times. These systems want you obsessed with how you look, how you present to others, your prestige, your status, and the groups that you identify with. It's like a big club. It's like never leaving high school. But ultimately, they want you obsessed with these things because it is you being submissive to the overall system. Again, the patriarchy, colonization, capitalism, and you also spending a great deal of money on these obsessions. It's hammered into us from birth that if we can meet these standards, then we will find happiness, peace, love from others, romantic partnership, prosperity, and that we will have a real life if we can achieve it. But the reality is that staying out of your own energy, being overly aware of others and hypervigilant about what is happening around you, whether it be the social scene, it be social media, it be the news, um, this is going to lead to many problems that can quickly take over your entire life, your mentality, emotional well-being, physical well-being, and especially your spirituality. So let's look at a list of different things that will happen when you are over-absorbed in the world around you or others versus remaining in your own energy. You'll feel as though you're missing something, you forgot something, or that your timing is off. You can almost feel like there's the pressure of running out of time. You may also have nightmares, an unrestful sleep, or blocked dreaming. You can no longer recall anything that you've dreamt for a long time. You have ADD-like symptoms, a lot of trouble concentrating on tasks. You have a lack of inner peace. You can't be centered, rooted, grounded. You have anxiety attacks. You have headaches, irritable bowel syndrome, nervousness from over-absorption, not just of information and the atmospheres around you, but also from people. We could call this empathic transfer or energetic transfer. You have dizziness, numbness in the face, the mouth, the hands. You may even go to the doctor and check to see if you have blood pressure issues or low blood sugar, but they can't find anything. You have depression, a detachment from yourself, and even others, even though ironically you're overabsorbed with others, it's a detachment from intimacy with them in an authentic way and definitely detachment from your spirituality. You are lacking in judgment. You tend to go with your emotion or your logic instead of your intuition. Okay, this lack of intuition or not trusting your own gut, being double-minded, is also leading to a complete disconnect spiritually. So you may not hear from your guides, your ancestors, your loved one, God. You are seeing a decrease in the enjoyment that you have with hobbies, you've lost all creativity, 
There's a diminished health reaction eventually to this. So even if you're health obsessed, even if you drink all the water and you work out, you know, five times a week, you are missing this element. And so health will deteriorate. There's a general sense of emptiness, unhappiness, searching, restlessness. I call this lost soul syndrome. So why stay in your own energy? Well, first of all, it eliminates all of the issues that we just spoke about. And also, it aids you in manifestation, getting in alignment with law of attraction, which is another way of saying that your prayers are going to be answered. You have to abide by the laws of the universe in order for these things to work in your favor. It's not enough just to ask and then live the wrong way. You have to hold yourself accountable. You have to take responsibility for your thoughts. You have to manage your feelings and your choices, your relationships. Okay, you can't just be childlike and let everything run you all of the time also. So number two, other people are none of your business. You have to realize this. And when we give them our power, when we pay too much attention to them, you're going to get negative karmic kickback. Check out my free mini classes on this at Ask Ivy on YouTube. You need to remember that their thoughts of you are irrelevant and you only actually gain the people in your life that you're authentically supposed to be with, members of your soul group, those that are going to support you and grow with you if you're really being yourself. So we do this by detaching from them mentally, emotionally, and often physically, okay? So it's unhooking, it's turning off the social media, it's unplugging, it's tuning out so that you can tune in. It's also really important to understand that you can't walk someone else's journey. This is like wounded healer syndrome. Uh, people will become obsessed with saving other people or you know, helping them with their own spiritual enlightenment, coming off of drug abuse or bad habits, bad choices in their life, sort of like a helicopter parent. You're not God. You can't walk their walk, finish their journey, or make their choices for them. So this is really a sign that you're becoming somewhat obsessed with other people's lives instead of your own where the work actually needs to be done. I would also say this, if you want to really become part of the collective. The only way to do that is to detach. See our past sermon on detachment a few weeks ago. When you start deliberately staying in your own energy, you're going to sleep better. Your dreams are going to return. You may have more vivid dreams, prophetic dreams. You can concentrate more easily on the tasks at hand. You're going to notice if something is causing you discomfort, nervousness, anxiety, and you're going to better handle that. You're going to have a greater sense of inner peace. You're going to be more in the present moment, not stuck in the past or living anxiously in the future. You're going to have better connections with others, nature, animals, you know, just your life in general and the important things that uh, you're supposed to be listening to from your higher mind, your intuition, spirit, headaches, uh, stomach problems, you know, general nervousness from overabsorption, the dizziness, the numbness. We, we spoke about the depression. These things will lessen. You're going to feel more attacked which is interesting because through detachment, we become more in tune. So again, with, you know, other people and the world around you, but with situations that you've been overlooking or seeing from a twisted point of view. You're going to see more detail in everything. Your creativity is going to come back. A sense of wanting to have fun, adventure, and being engaged in activities. Even food and drinks will taste better. Your uh, weight loss issues, if you've been trying to exercise, you're not having any kind of really great turnout, whether it be with that or health issues. You 
may see a turnaround because the positive energy is now able to flow through you and that energy increase can even trigger things like metabolism. You may also just see in general that you are feeling more fulfilled and like you're living your life purpose. It's so important to know why we came to earth, what is within our life contract, and that lost soul syndrome, feeling like you're just floating about lost at sea, is going to slowly start to decrease and you're going to feel more confident that you are here with purpose and that you know how to accomplish those tasks now, there are many areas where I see people fail and I have a tendency, my own self, to fail. But there are three really common things that we do to become over-absorbed in others of the world around us and completely detach from ourselves. And once we find ourselves doing this, it's almost like a hamster on a wheel. It can be really hard to get out of this cycle. So let's talk about these three areas so we can better prevent this in the future. Now, the first area is in love, romance. And I think that especially uh, for women, in the world, we have to remember that we have been raised up in a patriarchal system that wants us to be obsessed with a love partner, and that is reinforcing our inferiority, our lack of power, our instability, almost like we can't be independent and happy and whole and fulfilled on our own. And so it is about focus on that love partner and also having children and needing all of that in order to be fulfilled. So this is perpetuated by things like Disney. Uh, it's also perpetuated, obviously, by the government and the church. And we have to remember, and this is for everyone, male or female, whatever your preferences are in love, that it seeps into all of us, okay? It is a general tone in our society that we need to have that love partnership in order to be meeting that status quo uh, on prosperity and status. Now, the other area is on relationships in general. So sort of an obsession with what other people are thinking about us and whether or not those relationships are actually going to last. This creates some really dysfunctional systems where we see codependence, we see parentification, we see enabling tolerance for narcissism. It is about balance in relationships. And it's not about fear and entrapment and cult-like systems. So the universe is not going to support the latter. We have to make sure that everyone we're trying to keep in our life is there on their own accord, free will. They could leave at any time. And our contract with them in the universe may be up at any time. And we have to be okay in the fluidity of that reality. The second area is with work and career. The idea of wealth and how we have to get a degree or achieve a certain status within our career that will lead to wealth or a certain position in society. And that is the definition of prosperity for us. We have forgotten that we come to earth with a life contract and that the work we're actually here to do has to do a lot with our passion our talents, our natural gifts and abilities. And when we decide that we're not going to pay any attention to any of those m really important things, we are just going to focus on status and titles and uh, monetary gain. We are definitely going to see a complete and total deterioration in our happiness our sense of joy and fulfillment. And ultimately, you know, the issue is that we have to redefine what prosperity is. It should be about peace. It should be about sense of accomplishment. It should be about enjoying the work that you do. 
And we have to be willing to step out and redesign our lives if that's necessary. An unwillingness to do that and to be honest about what we're here to do, what we're good at, what we're called to do leads to things like imposter syndrome and workaholism, perfectionism. And the third category is with body image. So whether it's fat shaming, it's age shaming, it's the war against women's bodies, women's bodies in particular for minorities, it is all about trying to mold yourself through the brainwashing process of society into some mold your body will never fit into. And again, this brings us back to the money-making, you know, tactics through advertising and capitalism and the way that we can either get hooked onto these weight loss, you know, pills or these schemes or even plastic surgery. It is such a deterioration to what our bodies were designed to do and how beautiful they actually are and our ability to mentally and emotionally embrace ourselves, which ultimately leads to spiritual well-being. We have to get to a place with all of these categories where we are focused on self-love, self-growth, spiritual development, and none of these things are going to happen when we are outside of our energy, paying too much attention to the world around us or others. So I am praying for you guys. I am always doing the same for my own self. The only real solution is to be mindful of it every day throughout the day and to continuously bring yourself back to center. Hi, I'm Danny Johnson uh, with Bruce Revival, a numerologist with the Ivy Rivera Psychic Academy, and um, very much um, happy to be able to speak about and contribute to our sermon today with regards to staying in our own energy. Um, when thinking about and reflecting on staying in our own energy, the first thing that spirit brought forward was the quote from The Wizard of Oz, both the book and the, uh, the movie, when Dorothy uh, states famously at the end of the movie, if I ever go looking for my, for my heart's desire again, I won't look any farther than my own backyard because if it wasn't there, I never really lost it to begin with. And that is what I think about when well, that was the first thing that spirit gave uh, presented to me when reflecting on and meditating on what it means to stay in our own energy. To stay in our own energy requires patience. It requires um, a lot of self-discipline. And the type of self-discipline that sometimes isn't uh, easy and it isn't comfortable, it's the kind of self-discipline that requires that we um, literally just sit with and not control and not try to move what is there. It's um, when thinking about like sitting in our own energy and staying in our own energy. It kind of what spirit also brought forward was how as uh, our bodies have, no, uh, there are moments, there are times when it is absolutely essential and needed for us to go and see a physician or see healthcare practitioners or specialists. But there are also a lot of moments and a lot of times where our bodies know how, know how to heal themselves. Our bodies just know what to do. And it's the same thing with our souls. Our souls and our guides and our ancestors, they know how to communicate with one another in a way that doesn't necessarily seem natural from a mental perspective for, for us as humans. So um, when we are moved and we know that it is time to sit with ourselves, all we have to do is just show up. We show up. There are times when we have to be intentional about um, when Ivy uh, shares and uh, speaks about um, like the internal work, the um, she refers to it as shadow work, the work where we uncover what is there and heal, do intentional healing. And that is that's important. But there are also moments when all we have to do is just show up and sit with ourselves and be with ourselves. And our souls can kind of guide us as to how to do the work that we need to do. 
Um, there are moments where we just really have to just sit in silence and kind of like hold our own hands, and if, if that makes sense. Like our bodies and our souls being able to sit with one another. And it's almost like before we're even able to get to the shadow work, we have to sit with our sit with ourselves and our spirits and our souls and our guides can direct us as to how to do the shadow work. But before we can even do that, we have to sit with ourselves first. Like we can't put the cart before the horse or as Ivy shares, we can't level jump and we can't level jump with ourselves as well. And that is a huge piece of what it means to sit with ourselves. Forgiveness and gratitude are also a big part of sitting with ourselves as well. Um, sometimes um, it is a matter of reflecting and knowing and recognizing when we have been an issue or a problem or when we have um, unfortunately created circumstances that or contributed to circumstances that didn't have to go the way that they did. And sometimes it is us sitting with ourselves that helps us to recognize um, where we are at fault and how we have contributed. And it's only until we sit with ourselves that we're able to understand this and see this. From a numeric perspective, um, I, we very often talk about um, the um, energy that each number carries. And each number has its high polarity, high polarity and its low polarity. When it comes to sitting in our own energy, there are certain um, numbers whose energy can sometimes, if not if we're not careful, can be a bit counterproductive to sitting with ourselves. Uh, those numbers being especially number one and number four. The number one very often refers to as, or often um, is related to the energy of being able to power through something um, being steadfast and almost kind of uh, being that trailblazer in a sense. And that can be useful and powerful in some ways. Yet when it comes to sitting with ourselves, it can actually work against us. And I say that from experience because my life path number is one. And there are moments and times when I, it is necessary and essential for me to simply sit with myself. <clears throat> but then I try to help. <laughs> I try to help spirit and help my spirit and help and my helping does nothing but get, if we're talking about like making a pie, my help, all it does is get dough everywhere. It doesn't help anything. <coughs> Excuse me. So <clears throat> when it comes to um, being able to sit with ourselves, that is um, the number one, being very conscious and cognizant to silence the or at least, um, no, silence is probably the best word to um, silence that drive to want to do and just simply be. The other number is number four, that where, where the uh, numeric energy, the energy that is associated with number four, we have to be a bit careful as well because number four is that uh, the energy related to number four is uh, being hardworking and diligent and um, steadfast and being willing to put in the hard work. Like the number four is like the elbow grease. It's like the actual labor. People being willing to put to put in labor to get something done. And when it is time to sit with ourselves, anyone who's who has a lot, either a lot of fours in their chart, in their numeric chart, numerology chart, or if they um, have one of their major numbers being number four, it is just, you want to be careful and cautious not to allow for that energy to allow us to think that we can work our way into uh, not having to sit with ourselves. Like we can do enough work where we don't have to do that and we just can't get around it. The numbers where um, being able to sit with ourselves and sit within our with our own energy where it might be a bit more... Um, uh, might feel a bit more seamless or, or a bit more uh, natural is like number seven. Number seven is like the the, the number for uh, solitude and a lot of, it's one of the most spiritually charged numbers in numerology and being able to uh, not only receive information, receive downloads, but almost, not almost, but actually needing a bit of solitude, sometimes a lot of solitude and a lot of 
um, sometimes even isolation in order to process and make meaning of what's coming through. Also with the number 11, number 11 being a master number and probably the most spiritually charged number in numerology, where there is, uh, there is spiritual information, there is there are downloads that are coming from every direction and uh, a person literally in order to be able to function needing alone time and needing that quiet in order to make meaning of and figure out not only where the messages are coming from but what the messages are meant to share with us and tell us. So uh, sometimes knowing the numeric energy and knowing the um, the numbers that are associated with, that are within our numerology chart, some of those numbers being calculated through our birth date, some through the uh, numeric energy of the letters of our name given at birth, that helps us to figure this out as well. Um, so staying in our own energy, it is healthy, it is needed, it is a part of our overall well-being and health, and it is also, it's a practice. As with everything else, it takes uh, repetition, and it takes intention as well. So um, it was a joy to be able to um, energetically and spiritually be with all of you today and look forward to seeing you all again soon. Thank you so much. Hey everyone, Christina Del Rey here, just talking to you about staying in your own energy. So often people will try to escape their own energy because it's not a nice place to be. And many people just don't know how to make it a nice place to be and that therefore they spend their time being nosy or you know worried about other people's business um, or they are trying to get something outside of themselves and what happens is um, it's it becomes an obsession you know the the, the noisiness um, of other people's lives you know and, and, and that becomes your main focus in life and it can even develop into like an escapism or you know avoidance and when you're spending so much of your energy on other people or you know trying to obtain something outside of yourself it depletes your energy to become creative and to focus and to become your best authentic self because if you don't go within you're not going to find what is special about you you're not going to find what is beautiful about you because you're so worried about everybody else all your mental energy is going in that direction and there's just not enough for yourself and when you feel very scattered like that um, you become out of control and then you kind of feel like, you know, you could feel really emotional or you could kind of be like, you don't um, remember things because you don't have enough energy. Your mind is too scattered. You're forgetting this. You're forgetting that. Um, you know, you little things like you don't even realize that, um, you know, you don't realize that you locked the door. You don't realize that you whatever you did during your day, you did it mindlessly because you're so worried about um you know, other people's energy, you're not in your own. So it's really important to make sure that you um, are not commingling your energy too much. Um, and that includes, that includes like, you know, social media. Um, social media tends to make you think that you are lacking something. So, you know, it's conditioning your brain, it's brainwashing you into thinking that everybody else has it better than you and you are going to be jealous or you just want what they have and um, there's no peace. So, how, you know, how do you know if you're in your own energy? Well, knowing that you're in your own energy is when you feel at peace. You're not in lack. So, feeling at peace is different than let's say happy it, it's still happy but you're not on an emotional high when you're at peace you're just okay being so you're not um, reeling off of maybe like a flirtation or being with someone you're just simply sitting and you're at peace with yourself and your energy and you're not thinking about anything else you're just kind of present with the present moment and when we are in the present moment, we feel the divine presence. And the divine presence is ecstasy. It is bliss. 
it is perfect. So when we are at peace, we feel this beautiful energy and we feel, um, we feel happiness, but it's not an emotion. It's more of just a sense of being. When we constantly seek an emotional high, then we're in addiction. So even emotional lows can become an addiction too. So you're on a constant cycle of high, then low, then high, then low. Um, you are not experiencing peace. So you're not in your own energy, you're in somebody else's energy. And most likely you're feeling lack, like you're lacking something. Once you're in your own energy and you know that your soul is not lacking, you will not experience that up and down. You will experience peace. So some ways to, um, to stay in your own energy. Uh, one of the big things I think too is distancing yourself from other people at least 20 minutes a day. Um, you know, you can go walk in nature, you can sit in your car, you go to Starbucks, whatever you have to do. Um, but no disturbances from other people. And another thing too, your, your energy protection, um, you know, while you're at work, while you're around family members, do not stay in a situation too long where there is low vibrational energy. And most people that know me, um, if I'm in a situation, especially at work or maybe with family, and the vibration is really low and it's going to get me down, I run the other way. <laughs> and I'm nice about it. I will, you know, say what I have to say and then I just kind of jet off the other way and I kind of do my own thing. Because first and foremost, I have to protect my energy because I have to live with me. <laughs> so in my own energy, I want to be at peace. And if you're going to disturb my peace, I can't have that. I have to protect myself. So I... You know, I, I put myself first. I put my energy first. Um, another big thing too is if you are in a love relationship, and you are you are um, in a situation where you have multiple partners. Um, you know, whether it be polyamory or open relationship or whatever it is, um, you just have to be really careful about your energy because. Um, anybody that you have sexual relations with, you are going to commingle that energy with. So you want to keep the people that you are with or the people who, you know, <laughs> that they are with. You want to make sure that this is all high vibrational and you're well aware of it and maybe even cleansing your energy afterwards because, um, you know, these intimate relationships in our lives, uh, they do affect us. And some people, you know, have attachments. They have... Um, they have lower energies attached to them. So you have to really be able to cleanse yourself of that. Um, another way to stay in your energy, uh, meditation is first and foremost, a, a guided meditation is really good. Um, if you're not good at meditating, even just walking, hiking, sitting in nature. Shadow work is another way. Um, shadow work is taking a look at your biggest fears. Um, maybe the things that you are not proud of, the dark part of you that you don't really want people to know, writing them down and looking at them and dealing with them, you know, saying, okay, I want to change this. Or if you're talking about your fears, look at your fears and say, okay, what if this did happen? How would I be okay? Would I make it? Um, what's the worst thing that could happen? and becoming comfortable with the darkness or becoming comfortable with those fears and knowing that within yourself you are at peace and you're going to be okay and the last way that i think that you can stay in your own energy is to higher your vibration by opening up the heart chakra and letting in divine divine ecstasy and what happens is you know, you kind of open up the heart chakra and you just start feeling beauty. And you can, you can even like, I, at work I have um, a card with all these really wonderful words on them, like beautiful and prosperity and uh, loving. Like I have all these different words and I kind of breathe in the energy of those words, of those positive vibrations. And that, if you sit in 
positive vibrations for 15 minutes a day. So, you know, you can start out with less, of course, but if you sit with positive vibrations for 15 to 20 minutes a day, that is going to change you in a very big way. Um, it is your responsibility to keep your vibrations high. You have to recognize that everybody around you, whether they mean to do it or they don't mean to do it, are probably going to lower your vibration unless they are, vib unless they are vibing as high as you. So if you have these people around you who are trying, whether it's conscious or unconscious, to lower your vibration, it's up to you to keep that vibration high. And we do that through you know, raising our vibration as high as it can possibly go within um, our day, every day. All right, well, um, if you have any comments, please leave them below and um, you know, have, a, have a good time trying to figure out or trying to feel that divine presence in you in the present moment and staying in your own energy. Thanks.